Considering these seven graphs, if someone asked you to make a prediction about what would happen at some point on these graphs, well, some of the graphs would make you much more comfortable about making that prediction than others. Now, making a prediction using this one might seem pretty sensible. You could predict a point and feel quite confident that your prediction would closely match the data. Making a prediction using this one seems a bit sketchy. If you were to predict a point, you'd be really hesitant about betting any money on the fact that you're correct, or even close. So, how can we describe to someone how well our data aligns with our best fit line? We can use a correlation coefficient, typically shown as R, to describe how closely a best fit line represents the given data. Note that R, the correlation coefficient, is always between negative 1 and 1. So let's take a look at these graphs and consider the R. In this first graph, R equals 1. It's a perfectly linear set of data. Not really very common in the real world. If you collected data in the real world, the chances of you having no errors or variations like this would be pretty slim. Thus, to get an R of exactly 1 is quite uncommon. So let's take a look at the second graph. In this case, R equals 0 0.9. We can see that this is a pretty nice linear set of data, something you may find in the real world. The best fit line doesn't cross through all the points in this case, but it's definitely a nice linear relationship. In this case, you'd probably feel pretty darn comfortable about making a prediction. In this third graph, R equals 0 0.5. We can definitely see that there's a general linear trend, but it's not instilling a lot of faith in our best fit line. We wouldn't be totally confident about making a prediction using this one. In the fourth graph, R equals 0. Now, in this case, we'd say there's no correlation. That is, we could draw a best fit line like this, but really, the data doesn't give us the impression that any best fit line is very useful at all. The data definitely does not give us any confidence about making a prediction here. In this fifth graph, R equals negative 0.5. Now, a negative R just means that the data drops down as you go to the right. So data with an R of negative 0.5 represents the data just as good as a graph with R equals positive 0.5. The only difference is that it drops down as it goes to the right, rather than rising up. It seems to show a linear trend, but not very strong. Same as the R equals 0.5. In this sixth graph, R equals negative 0 0.95. This is a really good linear relationship with the data aligning quite closely to the best fit line. It's negative, so the graph drops down as it goes to the right, but we could feel really confident about this trend and any predictions we make using it. The last graph is a strange one. For this one, we would say R equals 0 0.4, but a line doesn't really represent this data well. We can see from looking at this data that the line is not a great tool for this one. To better represent this data, we should really be looking at a curve. Yeah, that's better. That could make better predictions. So this data is showing a nonlinear relationship. Thus, we recognize that it would make a lot more sense to make predictions based on a best fit curve versus our best fit line. Calculating the correlation coefficient is something that you can learn to do in the future. For now, just getting a good feel for R will do. Can you estimate an R for a set of data? Also, if you're supplied with a correlation coefficient, what does this tell you about your data? That's what we want to achieve here.